What we have here is a Ukraine first bill. This bill was never really about securing our border, but about securing another country's border. What we have here is a failure of the elites of Washington on both sides of the aisle, the leadership in the Democrat Party, the leadership in the Republican Party. What we have here is a failure of these elites to understand that the American people want to put America first. 61% of Americans live from paycheck to paycheck, and they want to put Ukraine first. I want you to talk to your constituents at home, the ones who live paycheck to paycheck, and tell them why you're shipping $60 billion to Ukraine. This will be $170 billion. We have never before in the history of the United States flooded so much money into another country. 61% of our country lives paycheck to paycheck. Eight out of 10 families that make $50,000 or less don't have enough money to pay for their bills in two weeks when their, if their check doesn't come. If they have one interruption in their family, one thing that sets them back, one unexpected expense, they don't have enough money to pay their bills, and you want to put Ukraine first. This is why the Democrat Party is losing the working man. This is why the Republicans have become the party of the working class. This is why many, if not most, members of the unions are now looking at Republicans because we support the working man. We support the working women of America, and we recognize that they do not want to send their hard-earned money and taxes halfway across the world. What does their money go for? Do we know what they're doing with their money in Ukraine? Well, we do know that the money wanted to, went to fund six fashion brands to go to the Paris Fashion Show. We do know that it's funding small businesses to sell ladies' handbags. We do know that it's paying for the salaries of 57,000 first responders. What about the first responders in our country? What about the people who get in an ambulance and have a $35,000 bill in our country? What about tackling the problems of America first? Instead, this bill is a Ukraine first bill. It's a Ukraine first policy. According to the Ukraine First Party, which includes elites of both parties, war is good. War is useful. War profits make us stronger. Sounds a bit Orwellian. They say that war profits will build the defense industrial base. This is the part they used to say quietly. They used to whisper this. They used to never say it out loud that war profits fund the defense industrial base, and by golly, we're going to be stronger the more war profits there are. According to the Ukraine First Party, war's not so bad. War profits make us stronger. Lost in this reprehensible argument is any sense of grief over the 500,000 dead. For the mothers and fathers weeping graveside, Little sense of grief, little sense of understanding that supporting and lauding grief is supporting and lauding the death of war. Missing from the war profits, our good argument, is any sense of compassion for the thousands of lives that will yet be lost by the prolongation of this war. If military contracts for 100,000 rifles are good, what about a million rifles? If military contracts for a thousand tanks are good, what about a million tanks? If military contracts for 500 bombs are good, what about military contracts for 5,000 bombs? Missing from the argument that war profit is good, that the more armaments we sell, the better, is compassion for the deaths that we're talking about, the prolongation of war. You know, war doesn't end typically in victory. Almost all wars end in negotiated settlement. The longer there are unlimited war uh, profits, 
the longer there are unlimited weapons being sent in Ukraine, the longer the war goes on, the more people who die. This is a grinder. It's a meat grinder over there. There are whole towns without young men. Do I think Russia's in the wrong? Of course they are. Are they the aggressor? Of course they are. Do I have sympathy for Ukraine? Absolutely. But we also are now funneling money to a country that has no elections. They've canceled their presidential elections. They've suppressed speech. They've banned certain opposition parties. They've banned certain opposition press. They've banned uh, officials of opposition religion. Now, this should bother people because it is said that American might and foreign aid is to express our power and our values. Are our values no elections? Are our values suppressing speech? What's well, become confusing even in our country as the Democrat Party has become the party of censorship. They are the party that agrees that the Biden administration is okay to meet with the FBI, to meet with Homeland Security, and to meet in the offices of Twitter, meet in the offices of Facebook. They suppressed for over a year anybody who was willing to say that it looks like the virus came from a lab in Wuhan. That was suppressed for over a year, not just by private business, but by the government, by the Biden administration meeting, the FBI, Homeland Security, meeting with the tech companies. So it doesn't surprise me that they don't care too much. Just get the money out the door, even though in Ukraine they're living under a regime where speech has been suppressed. What the American firsters, what the Ukraine firsters, are really arguing for is an America last policy. They're really arguing for a longer, bigger, more deadly war because it expands the profits of the defense industrial base. How despicable. How absolutely disgusting. They're saying the quiet part out loud. They're okay with war. The longer the war, the more profits, the stronger the American defense base. It's this circular argument. We're not sending the money to Ukraine. It's coming right back. It's coming back in the form of profits to the American arms merchants. It's okay. We're really not going to lose $170 billion because it's coming back in profits. We'll make more bombs. Whatever happened to the progressive left? But wasn't it great when there were people on the left who actually were progressive on things such as war? How absolutely disgusting. To argue that war profits are a benefit, a benefit that somehow overshadows the awful specter of war's death and carnage. The amount of money going to Ukraine in this bill is more than we spend on the entire Marine Corps. Think about it. We're going to send to Ukraine more money than we spend on our own Marine Corps. This is a bill about Ukraine first. This is a bill that makes us weaker. There is no money to give to Ukraine. It's not like we've got a pot of money. There is no surplus. There is no rainy day fund. This money will be printed up or borrowed from China to send to Ukraine. It makes us weaker. Once the border bill failed and they decided that this wasn't really about the border, that this was about Ukraine's border, the American firsters plowed out, plowed on, but with a more intellectually honest proposal. Nothing for America, everything for Ukraine. That's what this bill is. Nothing for America, nothing to stop the invasion of nearly a million people across our southern border. They offered a border bill that would have said, well, if we have an emergency, the emergency's already happened. Nearly a million people came in in the last two months. That is the emergency. This is a bill that is Ukraine first and America last and ought to be defeated.